Hey, what's up guys? So I'm alone tonight, so I'm going to make a quick video about imaging M27, the Dumbbell Nebula, uh, which we already imaged about four years ago with our DSLR camera. But tonight I'm going to be using the ASI 1600 mono camera with uh, chroma filters. I already have HA and O3 from a few nights ago, which I will show you later in the video. But um, tonight I'm going to focus on Surfer 2. I'm also going to plug this camera in. It's a cheap, uh, wise, like 25 bucks security camera. Uh, so maybe we can see, you know, the telescope moving uh, when not outside. And I'm also going to try remote uh, for the first time today with my laptop and my uh, computer upstairs. So let's try it out. Release the monster. No? Okay. So I'm going to use a mighty mount, all the cables are down there. Uh, the good thing is um, now there's no more cables going from the ground to the scope anymore. Because I bought a, um, this cable right here, which allows me to plug this to the battery right away. And then it actually goes, I mean the power goes inside here, and then it goes back here. And then the cable here goes to the camera and stuff. So... Then I'm going to use the Orion 8-inch astrograph and the ASI 1600 and the Orion 50mm guide scope and ASI 290 mini for guiding. The moon is already there, so almost a full moon. And I'm also going to be using the QHY Pole Master to pull online perfectly before I start, so I can be sure that I'm on target on Polaris. Um, being a fast Newtonian, I need to make sure I collimate every single time. So I'm going to try to plug this camera um, on the power source here and then I'll put it somewhere around the telescope so we can keep an eye out on the setup throughout the night. So I just have to make sure it's a bit uh, at a better angle, but looks nice. I can see the scope, the mount, perfect. So tonight is the 3rd of July, and I'm going to jump here in a second, and you're going to see why. So what I'm doing right now is, I'm doing a T-point model. So with the SkyX and the Paramount Mighty Mount, I am actually just learning the sky right now. So it's going to slew to several targets, uh, randomly in the sky, um, so it shows about 64 and um, so it's going through all of them and takes a picture and plate solves. Alright guys, so I don't know why it's doing that, my lamp is kind of going crazy right now, but anyway, uh, everything is outside going smoothly right now, the guiding is perfect, the uh, SGP process is going well, so what I'm going to try now is to go upstairs and try to remote control the laptop and we'll see how it goes. Um, hopefully I can control it from there. Um, yep. Alright, so here I am. Um, I feel like I'm trapped right now because I'm just inside my home uh, with SGP on. Pretty crazy. So everything seems to look fine. So I'm using any desk. That's this um, um, app right here. It's called any desk so you can just control any laptop you want or iPhone or iPad or whatever. Um, so what concerns me here is the guiding looks kind of crazy. Let me check the actual uh, graph on PhD. Actually, apparently it looks pretty okay. Um, uh, what I don't like to see is when a, um, a curve goes above or under two. Um, you know, under two is usually my uh, happy place, but here, uh, anyway. So, but overall though, it seems not too bad, I mean, 1.08. What matters the most to me right now is to check the files. So as I was saying earlier, I'm doing S2 tonight. So the SkyX has to be on at all time um, because of the uh, Paramount Mighty Mount. Without it 
running, the mount will stop tracking. The guiding is not too bad, we said. And then let's go back to SGP and see what's going on with the frames. Uh, so this is, uh, it says 58, but I wasn't sure how to reset the, the sequence. So it's actually number like three or four. Let's zoom in, because I was doing some O3 last night. So the stars look okay to me. Yeah. It looks like it's going a tiny bit to the upper right, but I think overall it's okay. So M27 in S2 does not look pretty impressive. That's because the uh, sulfur part is mostly in the center. So as you can see here, um, there is S2, but all around it there's none. So let me let me show you guys uh, what the uh, HA and O3 looks like. My favorite is the O3, it looks magnificent. And then I have my uh, ring camera here, and I just realized that the tiny camera here, the uh, the tiny wise 25 box camera, the infrared light or whatever that is for the uh, night vision is blinding this camera. So I'm hoping it doesn't have an effect on the telescope. I'm actually kind of scared about that. It probably has an effect on the telescope. I don't know. All right, so here we have a single shot of five minutes of O3 and HA. So let's see what the HA looks like. This is what the HA looks like in uh, five minutes. By the way, they were all taken during the moonlight. So like this whole dumbbell nebula is, is blinded by the moon. But anyway, usually the HA does not care about the moon anyway. So as you can see, it looks pretty nice. And then the O3 um, looks actually much better because, I mean, not much better, but it looks overall cleaner. I'm not sure why. And also, if you look at the outer shell here, you can see some O3 gas. Uh, on the outer shell. So that looks promising to me. And then tonight I'm doing S2, so once we combine everything, we'll see what the result looks like. Yes, yeah, so let's go back to SGP real quick. Uh, and open the sequence. I'm still learning how to do everything, but um, I think this is right, yeah. So I just put a random number here, but um, let's see. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we have 99 seconds left for the next one. So I'm just gonna wait like this for now. I'm gonna go play some games uh, or whatever. So the next day on the 4th of July, the moon was covered in fireworks, so I took my camera out and tried taking a picture of it, and here was the result. But even the night prior, so on the 3rd of July, while imaging, you could still see a bunch of fireworks being shot everywhere in Vegas. And here is a fun pick. I forgot to tick a specific box on SGP, uh, for the Meridian flip, so it kind of failed, and uh, so the mount stopped tracking right after the Meridian flip, and here was uh, the result of 5 minutes of exposure without tracking on M27. It looks kind of cool. And so here is the result of uh, O3 stacked S2 and HA. So my favorite is O3, it looks magnificent, and then uh, HA looks okay as well. And then in Pixel Insight, I just combined everything real quick and I tried, I spent like literally one hour trying to find the perfect combination of colors um, before processing the data. So I believe I used Pixel Math to get a customized uh, combination of channels that I was happy with. And so here's the result of uh, M27 taken in three or four different nights, all during the moon. Uh, bright in the sky. I'm not super happy with it. It looks kind of blurryish to me and way too noisy. I'm not sure why. I'm going to suspect that taking O3 during the full moon was a completely terrible idea and I'm guessing that's why it's so noisy because O3 lets broadband light uh, pass through it much much more than uh, HA and S2. So I'm going to blame the O3 here. And I think next year, if I want to image M27 again, I will just delete my O3 data and just retake it and use um, this S2 and this HA data from this year to combine it again. Mm -hmm.